You are struggling with loss every day. Cut off all the supply. You wake up one day and discover you are strong. It's not because you are strong. You have cut off the source of its feeding. Every spirit feed. If you cut that source, it will die. It will look for another other person. It will look for somebody else. That's why when Jesus appeared, the spirit oppressing the man ran away. Why? Because now his supply is about to be cut off. So you need to be able to understand that fasting is part of the requirement. But eventually there is a contract and it's not forthcoming. And you have a little bit prompting that you should fast. Why not fast? Say, hey, no, doctor said this. Doctor has been saying, has he changed your life? No. Engage that one for the moment. Part of the pathway to receive an anointing is fasting. This kind go with not accept by this. Another pathway for the anointing to come truly is giving. Whether you like it or not, there are people upon which anytime they want to go for anything major when they give doors open. For God so loved the world that he gave and set the corn of wheat fall to the ground and die. It abide alone. I have never seen any successful person that excel in life without giving. I have never seen. Forget about Christianity. Even the average billionaires you see out there, they give more than people in church. The greatest givers sometimes are not in church. They are outside of the church. Most of these worldly billionaires and millionaires, they are the ones that give more. Check. They do more charity than people in church. So that's to tell you that that their hard posture of giving is a law, a principle in the spirit that so long as you are willing to give, you will be blessed to receive. Only those that give can receive. There are things that God only gives to give us. That's why God put himself into the same test. For God so loved the world that he gave. It doesn't matter how much God loved the world. If he doesn't give, the world will remain unsafe. So the power of giving releases an anointing that men can't understand. That's why till today you can never undermine the power of salvation. It's upon the strength of a being giving something that is there to him. You think Jesus was happy or God was happy or the Holy Ghost was happy to see that what is precious among them being separated. It's like separating your spirit, soul and body and telling them to, to survive by their own. God gave and that's why anytime you give anything that costs you, an anointing is released. It was David that said, I cannot give to God that which will not cost me something. At every point in time, sir, every minister, chase everybody in the body of Christ, they will tell you, whether you are a music minister, whether you are a preacher, whether you are anything you are, there is coming to come a time in your life where God will make a demand for you to give. At that point in time, it's a moment of breakthrough. In fact, I even believe that breaking through generational and poverty as a spirit will require you to be a giver like a fool. If you believe that you don't have anything, that which you have, at that point it's easier to give because you don't have anything. But you'll be shocked that many people are even arguing 10%. They don't know that it's of no value. Because in real sense, when, when what you call mammon appear like this, you'll be shocked. It doesn't concern about your 10%. Because you can still give 10% and not still prosper. You must be able to understand spontaneous demands of God. There was a woman named Tabitha in scripture. The Bible said in the day when she died, what brought her back to life? It was not because of anything. There was a portal she opened by her power of giving that men said this woman cannot die. And when the prophet came, by default he beckoned upon that sacrifice and that thing opened. There are certain things that can only be remembered in the realm of the spirit by a kind of sacrifice of giving. No wonder when the angel appeared to Cornelius, he said your prayers and your arms giving. That guy did so many things. In the day when the book of Memoria, remembrance is open, what will be seen of you? Prayer, you are not there. Fasting, you are not there. Giving, you are not there. You are shouting a double portion of what? I have never studied through scripture apostle that there was ever a time that covenant was transferred without giving. Anytime the patriarch is about to die, he will tell them, go. Go and slaughter the best that you have. Bring it, then I will transfer something to you. That means transfer is upon the sacrifice of whatever you can give. When God wants to bless Abraham, Abraham remained in poverty until he was able to look upon Isaac and say, Isaac died. In recent, did God really want Isaac? No. Because if you check, everything that you gave God, God never took it. Check, he never took it. You thought you gave God, God took it. God did not take it. He always returned it back again. But the deception is that God wants to separate you from it. When God can separate you from that attachment to those things, that is when he can bless you. I realize that the things you don't pay attention to, 
The things you don't pay attention to always come to you. The things you pay attention to never come to you. Hold so much to your tender You will never see nothing. When you don't pay attention to it, more of it come. I realize that until you are detached from something, you may never have it continually. And that is why if you check many more times, what you don't even want is what people give to you more. Maybe you, you don't value clothes. People are just giving you too much to you. That's why because you have come to a point where this thing does not matter so much to you. But when it matters so much, you'll be shocked and surprised. Part of the pathway to receive an anointing and oil, I tell you, my friends, is giving. There are some of you that you have prayed, you have fasted, you have done all kinds of things you can never remember. But anytime the Lord prompts you and say, give this, you felt no. And the problem is this. If God demands that you give, if you refuse to give, the devil will take it. Because if God say I should give this phone, if I refuse to give this phone, sir, I will not receive the anointing. But he will, the devil now knows that this phone is not under covering. He can take it. There is nothing that you have that is not of the Lord, including yourself. And if you don't understand that you can't enter into the economy of the New Testamental believer. The New Testamental believer then in the act of the apostle, the Bible says there is nothing that they have that belongs to them. They gather. In fact, it was so worse that men sold their own plot of land and they came and lied to the prophet and they died. Is it not their own? In the kingdom, actually in the New Testament, nothing that you have belongs to you, including your life. That's why we can sit upon you and say, why are you sinning? Why are we so angry? It's not your own body. But there is a way that it affects us as a corporate body. So that is the reason why anytime we appear, we demand that everybody obey God. So it make it easy. So believers become one accord. In that one accord in agreement, it's easier for the Holy Ghost to flow. We are not seeing the strength of the power of God because there is disunity. There is disorderliness. There is disagreement. And all of this happens because all of us have not given ourselves to the Lord. There is an oil that comes at the point of death. Out of the ashes of dying, a glory is revealed. Except a corn of wheat fall to the ground and die, it abides the Lord. There are seasons upon your life where God will demand that all what you do is to give. You have two shoes, you say carry one and give another person. You have one mudu of gari, you say divide the two, give somebody else. In fact, you have only one cup to eat and to die. God will send you somebody that, and the person is not even a prophet. I leave it's a prophet, you say, and this one will pray and will multiply. This one will not be prophet. And the Lord will say, divide it and give. At least, <laughs> the widow of Zalifat know that it's a prophet. She argue, but she know that it will be multiplied. At least, she know that there will be a miracle. But sometimes, you will, God will send somebody, you will divide it into two, it will not multiply. But he's teaching you something. After a while, he will look upon you and say, your arms given as a saint, as a memorial. If God ever bless somebody, check. Check. Two things were involved. A covenant was activated or the book of remembrance was open. And even if God activates a covenant, you have to work continually in the line of that covenant. Because every anointing demands a concentration. That concentration may be your giving, may be your prayer, may be your fasting. Anything that you continually do that brings the anointing, you must continually do to remain in the anointing. There are some of you that there were things you did that brought the anointing. Now you say those things did not matter. The anointing left. That vision, that revelation that you were having, you knew what you were doing that brought it. Why did you stop it? You are not wise enough to know that that was your key in the realm of the spirit. I knew the things I do to receive utterance and unction. The Bible says, Cornelius, these things, as the things that brought this, remain in them. No wonder in the book of Acts chapter 1 and verse 2, and chapter 2, the Bible said, Jesus told them, and ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witness unto me. That was a promise. That was not a reality. And ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. It was a promise. It was in chapter 2 that we saw the reality. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were together in one accord. Now he gave them a promise, but they knew what to do to turn the promise to become a reality. It is true that God has blessed you. But do you know what to do to turn the promise to a reality? Because there will always be something you have to do that can activate it. No wonder when they were together in one accord, suddenly the Holy Ghost descended and they begin to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. At every point in your life, there is something you have to do for an anointing to be activated. 